Have you ever heard of the term out of sight, out of mind? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a system and automation that'll, that'll send your weekly calendar availability to your clients every week. And it's going to be done all on autopilot, all using AI. And I'm going to show you how to do this right now. I'm going to show you a bird's eye view of this entire scenario and how it's built. And then I'm going to show you how you sign up for each individual piece. And I'm going to show you how to do this step by step. Okay. All right. So the first piece you need is you need to have a database or a, or a spreadsheet, which we're going to use in this case of all of your clients. Okay. So in this particular case, we're using Google sheets for that. Then once, once we have a list of all of our clients, then what we want to use is we're going to use this, uh, a, a program called perplexity AI. You could think of perplexity AI as Google meets open AI or chat GPT. They talk together and they for perplexity AI. Okay. Then of course you're going to need your calendar. Um, in my particular case, I use, um, office 365. Um, you can use Google, you can use any calendaring tool that'll connect to uh, make. And then we need a way to pull all your calendar entries for a particular time frame. We compile that information and then we use open AI to then analyze um, all the data that was, was received from your calendar. And then it'll kind of sort to see when are you available. And then we're going to just draft an email. All right. That we are going to use um, Anthropic Claw to draft the email. And then we will use that email to send to our, to our client. Okay. All right. So let's look at the individual pieces. Okay. So the first piece is make make is, uh, the tool that we use in order to allow all the software components to talk to each other. Okay. Make is, um, free to sign up, but once you build your automation, you're going to want to upgrade to their, to their, uh, different products. They have a core product, a, a, a pro and a team, depending on how much automation you like to do. But for this scenario that we're going to build today, the free account is fine. And everything that I talk about today, I'm going to put links in the show notes. So you can click the link and you can sign up uh, for free. The next piece, as mentioned, is perplexity.ai. Again, perplexity.ai is Google, a Google search browser meets uh, open AI and they talk to each other and you can get live and up to date information. Uh, it searches the web for what you're looking for and it ties AI into that and it, and it produces some great results. Once you sign up for Perplexity AI, which is free, um, it's actually just pay per usage. So once you sign up, you sign up for a free account and then what you want to do is you want to go into the billing section, you want to add your, um, your, your card and then it will produce a, a API key. Uh, API key is basically a unique token to your account that will connect to make so that way make can, um, can call a perplexity AI to, to run different commands for you. It's under this API tab. I won't click it in this case because it will show my API key. And we're just trying to keep that confidential. But for your case, you, again, you just uh, sign up for perplexity AI, um, set up a, some, put a, put a card in there. I think you just load about $10 in there. And as you use it, it'll just replenish for you. And then you'll get an API key. All right. And it's the same thing for uh, open AI. Once you go to platform.openai.com. Uh, all you have to do is uh, click on um, create, sorry, you create your free account, then you just go to the API reference and then you can get um, an API key as well. All right. And the same thing for Anthropic Claude. Anthropic Claude is similar to um, OpenAI, they're direct competitors. But uh, for, to me, I, I like to use Anthropic Claude when I want to send something personal to somebody because to me, it has a little bit more. It seems like it's, it's more naturally written, whereas OpenAI is great too. You can use, you don't have to sign up for Anthropic Claude. You can use OpenAI for all of your um, um, creation of, of emails in this particular case. But um, I like to use OpenAI when I want to do some something a little bit more systematic. Okay. They, they have a lot of horsepower behind them and uh, I, I like it for that. And it's found this by testing that that's what works for me. Okay. Okay. So we got to go in and build a scenario. Um, but before I get started, I just want to let you know that, um, this entire scenario that's already built and made is going to be in my community. All you have to do is, uh, click on the, the, the more button and click on import blueprint, and then you can import the entire blueprint. But of course I'm going to show you how to build this step-by-step, step. but if you are lazy and you don't want to do it yourself, or if you're not super technically savvy, and you don't want to build it yourself, then of course you don't have to, you can sign up for my community. Um, you will have the, this exact blueprint and then you just have to click import and then the entire blueprint will be available to you. Of course, you just have to sign up your individual accounts, connect them all. Once you connect all your individual accounts, then it'll, it'll work. Okay. 
All right. Um, and I'm also, and I'm also in the process of, of building a, a done, a done for you type, um, of program. So this is really, um, a do it yourself. And the next piece I'm, I'm, I'm building is a done for you product. And you can sign up for the waiting list. I'm going to include the show notes for that as well. Okay. All right. Enough talking. So let's, let's start building the scenario. All right. So in order to build a scenario, in order to trigger um, the scenario and to get started, you have to do what's called a trigger. That's, that's something that's going to activate this, uh, this workflow. Okay. So again, we, we are using Google sheets. So let's open up Google sheets. And what we want to do in Google sheets is we want to, uh, search for a row. Okay. I'm going to do search for row and the same for search, search for a row. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Once we click on the search for a row. Uh, and, and whenever you connect, whenever you, um, connect the module for the first time, you're going to get, you're going to get a pop-up that's going to want you to connect that specific module to Google. So in this particular case, it wants to connect your account to Google sheets. So that's what you do. I already connected my account and for every scenario is what, what I want to point out also is, uh, make has a online help and it'll, the online help will be specific to that, that module. So if we click on online help here and open it up, what's going to happen. It's going to show you exactly how to connect, uh, Google sheets to make. And if you follow these instructions, step-by-step, step, it'll allow, it'll, it'll, um, allow you to connect to that specific, uh, program. Okay. All right. So in my particular case, I already connected my account. The spreadsheet I want to connect is my client spreadsheet. Uh, let's see if I can find it actually, just, I guess this one. I was on the world accounts, a Google drive, and I want to select client spreadsheet class client list. Sorry, client list. And let's show you the client list really quickly. Um, just to see, so how I made it. I put two of these clients. These are not actually my clients. These are emails that I found online. All right. Out of potential title agents. Uh, and I just put two in this particular case, but in your, in your case, you will want to put a list of all of your clients. And first name, last name, email, any, any additional information would be great. I put the company's website and also put their LinkedIn profile. Okay. Cause then we're going to use perplexity to search all of these things, all of these, um, sites so that we can get information about the prospect. So like, say, for example, you had a prospect who was in college, this is for an example, they just, and they graduated or they put something, some kind of accolades that was recent in LinkedIn, for example. You may want to reference that, right? You can say, Hey, last week I saw that you did such and such. Congratulations. This is kind of like an icebreaker. So that's what's good. That's what perplexity can do for you. Okay. But when you create your, when you create your spreadsheet, this, these are really all the fields you need. And actually all you need is first name, last name, and email, and that's it. Okay. All right. So now let's jump back to make. All right. All right. So the spreadsheet I'm using is the first sheet, the sheet name, sorry, sheet one. And let's hit on the advanced options. What I want to do is I want to do the custom read to see, uh, give me a second. All right. String she one client list search rows. All right. I think we are good in here. Okay. Perfect. So if you right click and hit run module only, it's going to, Oh, let's see. What's, what is it missing? Value must not be empty. Oh, there it is. That's what I was looking for in the first place, man. Ascending for that value. Good, good. All right. We're good. All right. Perfect. Run this module only and you'll see it pulled everything. It, um, Johnny Alden, John Alden, right? Johnny Alden, right? That was the first one. And then the next one is Troy, right? Troy. Boom. So I pulled both of those, both of those names on the output. So we see that it's connected correctly. All right. So the next piece that we need is we need to use per, um, perplexity AI. Okay. So hit our plus button. We are going to go to perplexity, perplexity AI. Okay. We want to create a chat completion. All right. And this is going to be our research bot. Okay. Um, what we're going to use is we are going to use an online version. Online version means that it's going to check for live data and they have a, um, a 32, 32 K for free to see a smaller function, which is probably pretty decent for what we need. But if you were searching a ton of data, then you want to, you probably could choose them the 128 K online. Okay. All right. 
And then what we want to do is the max tokens. We don't need to actually fill that. So let's go here. And then the, this, the, the row is going to be system and the content. I'm going to cheat a little bit and I'm going to just choose what I've already written just to save one time. All right, let's go here and let's read it together. I just said, uh, your, your research bot, your role is to find as much relevant and up-to-date information about the person as possible, about this person as possible. I need you to research job history, school history, awards and achievements, hobbies. I mean, you can choose whatever you want. You can say recent events, uh, and I'll just say, I'll put a summary of your findings and highlight the most recent company events. So that's what I chose. Okay. Hit okay. And then what we're going to do, let's rename this. We got to call it research bot. Research bot. Okay. Let's see. Let's give it a quick emoji. Uh, cool. All right. So what we want to do next is we want to make sure we save as we go, because we don't want to lose anything. So if we run this once, let's see what, let's see what it comes back with. Oops. Uh, gotcha. 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 Uh, I forgot to add one more thing. So this is the system role. We have to add a user role. My bad. All right. So <laughs> the next role is a user. All right, so that's the, just, for, just for clarity, a system role is what you tell the system to do. A user role is like the command you want to give it. Okay, I didn't give it anything to pull, right? So I want to pull things from the spreadsheet. So let me again copy this, and let's spread it here. All right. So the name, this here. So the name is the person's name, right? We pull from this from, this, from the uh, Google sheet. We're gonna do first name, space, last name, all right? the email address, we we'll click on email, their organization URL, that's the company website, right? And then the LinkedIn URL is right there. Good. All right. Hit okay. Let's make sure we hit save. All right. And let's try to run it one more time. This time it should work. And as it goes, it's going to pull from each one. You see, it's going to, it'll, um, Iterate twice because it has two names on the on the on the spreadsheet. But if we have ten names, it'll go it'll do this ten times. Okay. So let's see what it let's see what it came up with. So for the first person, let's see for the usage and I'm oh, sorry, for the choices, one uh, message, content, and pull this information. Let's see. It pulled, uh, Johnny has spent over two decades as an escrow officer. Um, you went to landmark title and didn't have any hobbies, but it put recent company events. Uh, let's see for the next person, if we go to the second operation and we go to, uh, choices, one message content, and it pulled for this person as well. It said it has, you know, the universities they went to, and this is all information that probably it pulled from LinkedIn, LinkedIn. Uh, this is, uh, Troy is a professional and diverse back has a, Troy is a professional with a diverse background in various industries, including title and escrow, security management, and engineering. Here's a summary of his job history, school history awards. So it goes to everything. Okay. This is just information and background that we can use in order to, to draft a, a good email. All right. This uh, email, because you want to educate the AI on the person that we send the email to. So that way we can draft a, 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 a contextualized message. Okay. All right. So what would we, what do we need to do next? Next, we need to look at the calendar, look at our calendar and see when, when we're available. Okay. That's, that's the whole point of this. So let's go to, um, let's see calendar. Um, all right. Um, as you can use Google calendar, but I'm using micro Microsoft 365 calendar. And in this case, I want to do an API call. All right. I want to show you something, um, that Microsoft didn't have, which if Microsoft ever sees this video, they need to implement this. So free busy. If you go to your calendar, you can see free busy events, right? And if we actually go to Google calendar and I showed this on one of my last videos and I'll put I'll include a link in the, in the show notes for this. Um, but if we go to Google calendar, uh, let's see, Google, Google calendar, right? If you go to Google calendar, they have an uh, option here that you can see, you can get the free busy information. But we can't get that information using. We can't get that information with um, with Microsoft, uh, with Microsoft uh, 365. 
So I actually had to, and I'll put a link again in the show notes. I'm going to probably say that a lot, but all everything, all of my research is going to be in the show notes where I had to connect or, or research Microsoft's um, API. All right. And then just so I can um, access the free busy information. So we got to use our Microsoft 365's API in order for us to do that. All right. So this is the link that we need to use in order to create it. So the, so they didn't build the, the, the free busy information inside of me, but there is an API for you to access that information. So that's what we're going to use. Right. So the URL we need is the get schedule. That's their API to access the, the free busy and for the free busy information. And we need the free, free busy information. So that, that we, that way we can tell our clients when we're free or busy, right? All right. So click on post. And what we're going to need here is under the headers. We need to add here. So the context type is JSON, and then we need to add a second value value, which is prefer. And, uh, oops. And we'll specify a time zone. Okay. So I'm going to include that here. All right. Let me get the time zone for you. And I'm on Eastern time. Uh, if you're in a different time zone, you can select whatever time zone you're in and you can select that there. All right. So that's what we need in the headers. And then what we need in the body is I'm going to copy this. Oops. And again, I'm going to include a link to the API and in the API, the, 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 the Microsoft's, um, um, API for the, the free busy schedule, they included examples, which you could just simply um, copy this and, and insert the information there as well, but they have it in a JSON format, but all we need is the schedules and the schedules is going to be for the email address. So this is the, the email address associated with your account. Um, so this is my email address. And then what you want to do next is you want to have a date, like a start time and an end time. Okay. So in my particular case, I, I chose the 18th through, I chose the 18th, which was, um, actually yesterday, the Sunday, the 18th through, um, the 18th. So. I wanted to choose the, the, the goal for this was to set out the, the messages on Monday, right? So, um, it's going to look from Monday through Friday, right? And if we actually, let's look at that. So if we go to here, if we go to, um, calendar and then we choose a, the, the set day, um, function, which is right here, it'll kind of give you, oh, sorry, I lost it. It'll give you examples of what you can do. All right. So you can choose the different days. So you, I wanted to choose between one between Monday and Friday, the work week, but you have to choose your own work week. So if you work, if you do closings or if you want to um, to Saturday, you can choose Saturday as well, but I gave it a start date and, um, time. And I gave it an end date, which was the same date, which it didn't matter because it's going to go by Friday, but I wanted to, to choose the week of the 18th. Right. So if you look at the calendar, it's going to be this week. It's going to choose. It goes, I wanted to choose Monday through Friday of this week. Okay. Cause it starts the week from Sunday through Saturday. Okay. So that's what I did. Um, if you are going to run this, say you're going to run this every Monday, you could, instead of you doing, um, instead of you putting in the actual date, you can put like today or now they have the different variables you can use. And in the template that I put in the community, I'm going to change this. So that way it'll work. And if you send it out once a week, so say you send it out every Monday, it's going to work on whatever Monday you send it on. It'll do it for, do it for that particular week. Okay. Perfect. All right. An interval I want is 60. So it's 60 minutes. So I want an hour window. I want, I want it to pull times that I'm available for an hour. Okay. All right. All right. So let's hit okay. Perfect. And what we can do is we can actually just, uh, run this module only. And then when we actually let's hit save, let's rename this to search calendar. Oops. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Good. 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 Hit okay. Let's hit save one more time. And let's just run this module only instead of running the entire thing. And it's going to pull when I'm available. So it pulled a few time slots that I'm, um, I'm, I'm available. Okay. For the week. Perfect. So actually what it's pulling is pulling, it's pulling my calendar entries for the week. Okay. All right. Perfect. Good. 
All right. So next, what we want to do is we want to um, we want to iterate all the information. So if you have like, say you have like twenty calendar entries in a week, we want to compile all that information into a text so that way we can have OpenAI do the research because as it's formatted right now, OpenAI will have a little trouble iterating and pulling out all that information. So we will want to kind of prep it. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is call it iterator. Oops. And it's actually right here. Make it easier. Okay, iterator. So the array we want to iterate in this particular case is we want to go here. We want to choose the value. Let's collapse all. Let's go to our calendar. And we want to go to the values and then we want to go to scheduled items. Okay, so this is going to pull all of the different times that we are, we are, our um, calendar is booked. Okay. All right. Once we have that, we want to use another tool called the aggregator. So the, the iterator is going to pull. And if you, even if you look at the visual illustration, it's going to pull all of the information, all of the calendar entries and push it, pull it, put it into this database, if you will. Then we want to take all that, all those fields and we want to make it into a text, right? So then we get this call text. Oops. Aggregated. Tools. And we want to do a text aggregator. That's right here. And on the text aggregator, what we want to do is we want to pull this iterator and let's look at the advanced features. The row separator, we can choose other. And then what we want to do is we want to pull the text. Okay. So the text that we need is we need the, the start date and time, and then we need the end date and time. Okay. So we're going to pull all of those entries. Cool. And hit OK. All right. Let's hit save. Uh, but let's just save it anyway. Um, make was this uh, give, give that little error message saying that they don't want to end the actual, um, they don't want to end this on like, um, a calculation. You need to end it on something different. They give they spit out an error when you do that. All right. So the next thing you need to do is we need to plug in open AI. So open AI now is going to read all of those entries and it's going to confirm the availability. Okay. So what you want to do is we want to create a completion. Okay. And once you create the completion, we want to use the model. We're going to use model GPT 4.0. All right. And then the role is going to be user. And let's just copy what we need here. Okay. All right. And then I'll, of course, read it out to you. So that way we can get everything gone. All right. All right. So say so you're, you're, you're my AI assistant. I need, I need you to do the following, analyze the text below, which was parsed from account from the calendar entries. The parsed calendar entries are dates and times that I am not available. I need you to determine the time slots in which I'm available for a minimum of one hour. So then it goes through the time slots. Okay. And the parsed calendar entry is going to be the text from the aggregator. Okay. All right. After confirming my availability, I need you to output a short SMS, like text message, like response, confirming my availability by the date of the week. And I gave it a few examples and then that's it. So then I, and I said an output, um, I said output short SMS, like response of, I should say, so if you're of my availability, of my availability. Perfect. Of my availability. Perfect. And the tokens I need is a thousand tokens. That should be more than enough to do everything. All right. So let's do this. So now let's rename this. I'm going to say confirm. Confirm availability. All right. Oops. Perfect. And let's see. Let's give it a thumbs up. Perfect. Okay, let's hit save and let's run this again. We almost there, guys. All right, perfect. So it's going to go through it. It's going to go through it twice. Really, this needs to go through it because we have two entries. 
And then if we go here, it's going to show the results. Okay. So it pulled all this. These are the different entries that it pulled out. And if you go on the SMS like response, it says on Monday the 19th, which is today, I'm available from 1 p.m. to midnight. Tuesday, I'm available all day. Uh, on Wednesday, I'm available, it says midnight to 10 a.m. and then 11 a.m. to midnight. And um, Thursday, it shows when I'm available and it shows a different calendar entry. So I pulled different calendar entries that I, I have some uh, appointments on my calendar this week and it shows days I'm free and days I'm not available. So this is something that you will send out. We could, of course, tweak this a little bit to show, okay, you could say, you know, my work schedule is, is from nine to five or 10 to three, only show days that I'm available between those times. So you can kind of tweak it a little bit. Uh, you can do it to your liking as well. Okay. So cool. So the next thing you have to do next, the next thing we have to do <laughs> is draft the email. Okay. All right, cool. So to, in order to draft the email, what I'm going to use Anthropic Claude. Okay. Let's go over it a little bit. Anthropic Claude, and we're going to create a prompt. And on this one, we are going to use the Sonnet 3.5, which is the latest model. And if you haven't used um, um, Claude 3.5, it's amazing. And it's actually pretty robust if you use it in the, um, in the, the GUI interface. So if you go to Anthropic Claude, um, if you go to their website and you start playing with it, you can create programs and you can do a bunch of things. And it's amazing, um, this technology. So I'll encourage you to go take a look at it. Okay. All right. Um, the max tokens we're going to use is a thousand and the role we are going to use is a user role and we're going to add some context. The context is a text and the text. Let's just cheat again. And I'll of course read it to you. All right. All right. Awesome. All right. So let's close this and let's dig in. All right. Um, you're an expert. You're an expert messaging assistant. Your role is to draft a customized email message. Draft an email message to my client in a formal yet matter of fact tone. I'm a vendor that provides notary signing services and I want, and I want them to know my current weekly availability. Use my current information. Use any current information about my client to help you draft a relevant email and you can use it as an icebreaker. Um, the small talk should be very brief since we've already have a relationship. So I didn't want to, I didn't sometimes open AI can can literally throw vomit information about things. So I just, I wanted to tell them like, you know, slow down. I already know this person. I just want you to just draft, use the, have a little icebreaker, but at the same time, um, give the information that I need. So I wanted to keep it short and sweet. Okay. So we just need to put the client's information. Okay. That's the availability. So what we want to do is client's first name. If so, if we collapse this, we can get that information from the Google sheet, right? So from the Google sheet, we have client's first name, uh, the client's last name. And the next thing we need is my availability, right? So my availability, we'll get that from, um, let's see, we're going to get that from, where's my availability? Sorry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's from <laughs> too much going on. My availability is right here, right? So from the results, from the results, can we confirm the availability? So we need the, the availability from here. Okay. Perfect. So now let's, uh, rename this. Oops. Like, sorry. Let's rename this. You gotta name this to draft email message. So I'm, I have it, I'm going to ha I'm having this output in text format, but what you may want to do, and I won't do in this particular case, because as I mentioned, these are just, um, names that I pulled from, from LinkedIn. If it was your particular client, what you want to do, the next step you will want to do here is actually send out the email. And in my particular case, of course, I use, um, office 365, but you can use whatever, uh, email client that you use. And typically I found that if you send it in HTML format, the formatting will be a lot, a lot better when you send the email out. Okay. So you want it, you will want to have Anthropic, I'll put that in HTML format, but I'm not going to do it just so that we can visualize it a little bit better. Okay. So let's uh, run this. All right. So what it's doing now is pulling the information from the Google sheets. Uh, the research bot perplexed the AI is doing research on that particular person. Now it's checking my calendar. It's compiling all the calendar entries 
is then confirming my availability and now it's drafting the email message okay all right so let's look at the first one it's still working on the second one we can look at the first one sorry right? so let's look at the text response here it is let's see uh, here's a draft of the message right weekly availability update two for seven closing notary there um the johnny i hope this email finds you well i noticed you've been analyzing calendar entries recently i trust that that's been a productive endeavor for you well that's not necessarily what i want it i write it to provide you with my current weekly availability for notary signing services please find the email below so it gives them my availability should you require my services during any of the time slots please don't hesitate to schedule an appointment as always i'm committed to providing prompt and efficient notary services to meet your needs if you have any questions or need any further information please feel free to contact me best regards aaron 24 7 closing so that one was okay okay uh, let's see what the second operation is all right let's go back in click it again let's see the second one so this is the second person let's see what it came up with all right uh um there troy i hope this email finds you well i trust that you've had a chance to review the calendar analysis i sent over recently as always i'm here to provide you with our notary signing services at 7 closes i wanted to touch base and provide you with my current weekly availability for notary services please let me know if you need to schedule any notary services during this time i'm happy to accommodate your needs within the time the, these available slots if you have any questions or require assistance yada 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 okay so it was pretty much straightforward okay and if i were to run this again it, it gets better over time but we can tweak this as we see fit so, so if we don't if we're a little too formal i said I, I i told that i gave this a formal matter of fact i could say be funny or you, whatever whatever your tone is you can put your tone there and you could even go and give it examples this is how i like to draft emails and you can give it like five examples of different emails that you like to that how you draft your emails so then it'll follow that format so then your client will it will feel like it's almost from you right so the more information that you give ai the better it will be so then you can include you could include examples okay um like you can add context here you can say the type again you can say text and then you can say hey these are example these are some sample emails that i've sent to the clients in the past, follow this format and it'll follow that format. Okay. All right. This is just a basis or just a starting point for you. And um, this shall hopefully help you to automatically send emails to your clients every week. And um, that's what you can do with this automation. So again, another piece that you want to do after you've uh, drafted the email is actually sending email, like I mentioned earlier. So you use, um, in my particular case, I'm going to use um, Outlook 365 to send out the email and I will specify the format. The format I'm going to use is going to be HTML, right? Because that's the format they use. And Google is the same way. If you if you feed it HTML format, it's going to be formatted correctly. All right. Well, I hope this automation helped you. Don't forget to smash the, the like button, smash the subscribe button. Um, try to I'll put out videos pretty often on this channel. So go ahead and, and view it. If you like this video, again, hit the like button and I hope to see you next time. Peace.